Okay, so us southerners reckon it's a bit cold up here. <laughs> and I went for a walk at seven o'clock this morning. Kevin, Kevin saw me, he waved out his kitchen window. I took the camera and I took a picture of the site at seven o'clock this morning. That's, that's how cold it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Colder that than at my house. <laughs> so this is the first session, which is the welcome and the review and what's been happening and all that stuff. So first of all, welcome everybody and thanks to Kevin and the crew. Um, Brilliant, uh, brilliant organisation and, uh, and teamwork, they've done it. The very first thing we need to do is those of you who are coming to the meal tonight, now you don't have to put your hand up, Graham. Not yet. <laughs> there is uh, the choice of either you can have the standard bar menu at the standard bar prices, or they've done a special five course menu for 25 quid with choices. If you want those, please fill in the form now so Kevin can give them to the lady at half past one. So anybody who wants to do the 25 quid five course job, of which several of us have already signed up for, let us, you need to do that now. Uh, if not, is it half past seven? Yeah. Half seven in the reindeer. Yeah. Yeah. Can I hand those out for those people? Pass it around a little And there's one filled in there. Yeah. Uh, no, that's filled in. Yeah, that's one. Uh, right, yeah. Write your name on the top. Yeah, please, name on the top. So, and, and ring the otherwise, course. you don't get any exam marks if you don't put your name on the top. <laughs> Two parts. Yeah. The lady from the reindeer is coming back. I'll pass those around if you could. In fact, you probably ought to give me one as well. Yeah, and I need to fill mine in. Oh, Clive, can I have a, can I have one? I need no, I just need one. <laughs> right. Okay. A um, couple of rules about the site. Make sure you've paid your ten quid. You don't pay it to the BATC. You pay it to Finningley Radio Club. Ten quid for the day, and that buys you lunch and your tea and coffee. Some limited tea and coffee, by the way. Yeah. The other, the other rule is building two those of you who have managed to find it, is full of wonderful junk. There are some personal stalls in there. Kevin's got some stuff. I've got some stuff. The junk at the back of the building belongs to Finningley Radio Club. It is not free, but what it is is you go in there and you pick up what you want, and then you come and talk to Kevin and make him an offer. Don't just walk off with the stuff. Um, so if you've picked up anything there this morning, please make sure you see Kevin or one of the staff to, uh, to make him an unreasonable offer, which he's bound to accept. Um, and if you've picked up anything off my table, you ought to really ought to put a quid in my pocket as well. Uh, I think already it's been a success, because what we've done this year is given you a lot more time just to chat and talk, and look at the demos. That was one of the criticisms we had. Uh, previously, we've tried to cram too much in. So um, we will be doing talks this afternoon. But I think we've had a lot of time this morning already, which has uh, been really good. Uh, we're using, we are recording and also streaming. Um, so we've got a radio mic, which we will ask you to use when you ask any questions. Uh, evening meal, be there at 7.30. Agenda, hopefully you've all picked up a piece of paper, which tells you exactly what's going on. Essentially, this afternoon, we're focusing on this new black magic stuff called Reduced Bandwidth TV, or RBTV. And we've got our guest speaker from France over, Jean-Pierre, welcome. Uh, he's going to talk to us. Brian's going to be talking to us about, um, about what he's been doing on the hardware side. I'm going to do a, a quick introduction to it, uh, and also then we're going to present some awards, as you know, BATC... Uh, to try and uncover, encourage the innovation, set up some awards at the beginning of the year, and we're going to be presenting those uh, later on. Tomorrow we've got, um, we're not so much focused on transmission tomorrow, it's very much more about production. Uh, we've got some uh, bits on the ISS, Graham's going to do a workshop on ISS. Uh, a pretty exciting Graham and Peter 
after that are going to be talking about the new DVBS transponder which is going up um, next year. Uh, Brian is going to come and talk to us about his classic stuff. Kevin over from the US is going to talk to us about challenges of LCD design. Um, we've got Charles coming on the phone to talk, tell us what's next and uh, really poke us into doing something interesting. You may remember two years ago, he set some ideas about doing reduced bandwidth TV and here we are all talking about it. And then finally, Chris, who in the morning has kicked off talking about FFmpeg, he's going to uh, tell us why we all need to paint the green wall in the shack. So uh, I think there's something, something for everybody there. Whew, yeah, Sunday's busier than today, actually. So. So a quick sort of 10 minutes on, 15 minutes on, what's been happening in ATV and the BATC for the past year. Um, thank goodness this is not an AGM <laughs> or a formal meeting. Uh, well, the committee are a bit more relaxed than they were this time last year. Uh, <laughs> some of you may remember. Um, so this presentation is just, just for information, it's nothing you know, it's not a formal presentation by the BATC. It's just to keep you posted as members on what's happening in your club. Oh dear, this is where they've got to stand up. So, I'm the man who dispatches the orders and very occasionally gets them wrong. So, I'm sorry if your order was wrong. But it's amazing. When you go down to the post office, they say, do you want proof of postage? And it's great to be able to say, no, I don't. And the reason why they ask these days is there is such a scam with people buying stuff online, particularly through eBay, and saying it hasn't arrived, that all of the sellers on eBay are now asking for proof of postage. But it's really fantastic to be able to say, no, I don't, because I know these guys. And do you know what? A couple of you in the last month or so, have, oh, Brian, you didn't ought to know this, but where I've shipped the wrong thing, you've sent me an email saying, you sent the wrong thing. Can I send it back? So, you know, it's really good to know that. Uh, so I run the shop and I'm also the ETCC rep, the repeater rep. Dave, ADM, you've all met him. He's, he's in the other room. Brian, treasurer of many years. Frank, editor man, brilliant job over uh, operating the desk at the moment. Graham, VZV. El Presidente, Hello. Clive, Hello. and this is a this is really unusual. Dave GKQ. Hey guys. No, no, <laughs> nobody knows who he is because he's never here. <laughs> he's he's the only one with the suntan. And Ian uh, GXZD has been co-opted on the committee because we can't officially bring him on until next year. But unfortunately, he can't be with us today. That's what they all say. And he's the guy who's responsible for our publicity and doing the Facebook and the Twitter, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Doing a really, really good job. Great thing is that membership is still going up. Um, 2012 over there, so three years ago. Two years ago at Finningley, we were here. Basingstoke, Cat 14 and still climbing. In fact, we're now at 956, which we think is probably the highest ever. Uh, no, Brian says not. Uh, it's the highest ever in recent years. That'll do. So the target is to get it to 900. Now, I reckon we could fix that by every, each one of us in this room, sorry, 1,000, each one of us in the room co-opted or recruited one new member, we'd probably make the 1,000 mark. And Dave Mann's offered to buy the beer when we do that, so. Uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, 74% 74, 74 of you are cyber members. A lot of... Uh, overseas people as well. 26% paper members. We currently print around 300 copies. 
um, and 20% of the members are about overseas. And yes, that does call into question about the cost of printing, and it's something we're reviewing all the time. The joke that Frank has is that he takes it to the printer, and the guy presses the green button, and he can't press the red button quickly enough because he's only running 300 copies. It's, uh, it's not a big print run these days. So um, we do need to try and work out how do you encourage you all to, uh, to take the hardware copy. But um, that's where we are. And I think that's great. You know, that, that nearly 1,000 members is really, really good. And you must have uh, saved some money then in, in, in respect to print then. Yeah, I mean, we're always looking at print costs. That's, yeah. that's one of the but biggest I mean, prints. Yeah. If you look at it before we went, uh, as we have done yeah. online, yeah. It, the, the print cost would have been tremendous then if it yeah. hadn't gone on, on, online. Yeah, yeah. but we, you know, we, we are forever looking at print costs. It is a, it's not so much the print costs, it's the postage costs. That's, that's the big issue. And, and also with the shop as well. Postage is expensive these days. And... You know, talking about CQTV, I think it's probably better than better than ever. You know, Frank's done a Frank's done a brilliant job. He came on two years ago, just after Finningley, and I mean, the, you know, the the stuff we've been putting out really, really good. But it is a very hungry mouth to feed, and we do need you guys. And I know sometimes there's one or two of you in the room who may feel hounded because we're saying, "If you've got anything we can put in, it is a hungry mouth to feed." And, you know, we do appreciate people are interested in what you're doing. So just send pictures in. You know, if, if you're doing something interesting, send a picture. You know, people, people like to know what's going on. And not everybody, believe it or not, reads the forum. So, uh, you know, don't just think just because you popped it there that it's, it's being published. So, you know, let's, let's have your input. Keep it coming. Um, CQTV, DATV still going well. We don't see them necessarily as competition. But all, all we ask on that is that if you're doing anything that we are supporting, such as the mini tuner and this sort of stuff, or you're going out with the BATC banners and you're doing a show, you know, we, we kind of like first refusal on anything you're doing. I think that's, that's reasonable to ask. But, uh, you know, we don't, we don't consider them as competition as such, but um, anything you get up to be good to have some copy from. But, you know, I think one thing that I, I would say about C, CQDA TV, they, they make a big play on saying we are a free magazine and magazines should be free. And I, I think, you know, the way I look at it is that your BATC membership buys so much more than just a magazine. You know, it's not, we're not just a magazine. We do so much more. And um, CQTV is very important, but it's only one small part of what we do do. Um, and I've just listed some of the, the hidden stuff that goes on, like, you know, two new amateur television bands this year, you know. When have we ever known that, you know? 146 megs to get into the RSGB band plan room for digital television. That's pretty significant. And the same with 70 megs. I know, I know there's a bit of an issue there that Ofcom haven't quite got round to finalising it, but... We have been told that that's a band that we can use formally for digital television. You know, that's, that's pretty astounding in this day and age that we've managed to win two new bands. And certainly when we went to Ham Radio in Germany and said that, people couldn't believe it around Europe that you've, you've managed to get new spectrum. It's, uh, that's pretty significant. And that comes through having good relationships with Ofcom and the RSGB. And, you know, the RSGB gets bad press at times, but actually they do a very good job in looking after our interests at Ofcom. Um, TV repeaters. <coughs> Current, I think this is probably Clive. Just Poor old Clive is the only guy who has got an outstanding repeater application for longer than a year. So we got it down to one outstanding application just uh, uh, about three months ago. Um, we've cleared all of the rest of them, even on 23 SEMs. Um, we've got the 3.4 gig band, which is brilliant. Anybody who's thinking about a repeater, think about putting it on 3.4. It's so easy to receive. It, is, it works really, really well. These guys in KM land have proved that. The guys in Norwich have proved it. We've proved it down at HV. 3.4 gigs is good. Um, 
So there's only two outstanding applications. There's a brand new one just gone in for Danbury, which will be quite interesting, on Edge Hill. If anybody knows Edge Hill, great big ridge overlooking Birmingham, that whole area. There's an application just gone in for a TV repeater up there. So that's, that's really good. Um, you know, what else do we do? We, we, we go to things like Hamfest and Ham Radio. We, Dave does the CQT, uh, the, sorry, the TV column in Ragcom. Um, we've got the awards, which we're going to be talking about shortly. And, you know, we support all of these projects through the shop. So, you know, we are much more than just, just that little magazine. Talking to the shop, 300 orders in the last three months. I think, I think I posted on the case. Yeah, yeah. I, I po <laughs> Postman Pat, yeah. I think I posted on the uh, KM chat that it's a pity that the, the post office don't do a loyalty scheme, you know, a, a rewards card, you know. <laughs> they sort of look at me and go, oh, no, not again, you know. So, um, okay, the 300 does include membership renewals, but we've had a lot of orders just recently. Uh, and the rest are manually executed by volunteers. You, you know, you... There is a lot of effort by people like Brian and also Dave and myself go in. And yes, we get it wrong occasionally. And yes, the software is getting old. And yes, I can't put pictures in the shop at the moment. But we'll talk a bit more about that uh, in a few minutes. But it is great, you know, how, how, how these are examples of how the BATC supports the ATV community. But we can't do it without people like Brian. I mean, those two hardware kits are down to one guy. And that's Brian. You know, he's done a really, really good job in making it accessible to the rest of us. Um, BATC Online, it's a major part now of what we offer. Um, we've got the website, which I must admit, I, I, I personally regard as less and less important these days in, in the way I, I do stuff. You know, it's, it's the forum and the Facebook and this sort of stuff. Web pages are becoming less important, but they are very important to an organization like ours because they are a landing page for, for newcomers. Um, dot TV is still unique for the ATV community worldwide. No adverts and lots of other reasons why it's unique. But also, we do about seven terabytes a month, so we, we get a fair amount of traffic through. Uh, the Members Forum, God, that's been busy, isn't it, just recently? Um, Use the RSS feed. I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. But there is, there is a web link that if you store as a favourite, it will just list all the posts, the recent posts in order of being posted. That's the way I keep on top of it because there's just so much going on on that forum. But it's all looking very tired and, you know, we've got to update it. And I know we said that at Cat 13 and we said it again big time at Cat 14. And... To be honest, this is the bad news, really. You know, this is the one thing that we really haven't got to grips with. And I think you could quite rightly say, why is it taking so long? Well, the reason why we're taking so long is because what we've got today is pretty good. But it is old and it is a highly integrated solution, which is custom coded by Chris, G1FEF, about eight years ago and it's got to the point where we really can't support it or change it and it it does all of this stuff and it and and when we started to try and unpick it and understand what we could do you know we we, we tried to split it in chunks but we can't because of this thing in the middle I mean even the streaming you may say well the streaming's got nothing to do with a members database oh yes it has when you register as a member you can click whether you want to stream and that then lets you go to a page that you set up your stream and you do that HTML bit at the bottom and it gives you the, the stream name and the URL to encode to. And it will only stream using no authorised codes. So the members database is linked directly to the streaming server. Now, you guys can't see it, but hopefully the guys who are watching can. We have got a new streaming server up and running. We used it for Amset, 16 by 9, high res, looks pretty cool. But what we haven't got is this link here to link it to this, to this member's database. So we're just using it. I was literally on 
uh, on Skype with Phil, Phil Crump, who is hard coding in what we want on it for today. And that's how we're going to do it. Now, we're looking at whether we could move the repeaters over because there's only a limited number of repeaters. So maybe we can move those onto the new one and then just hard code admin. But all of these things are linked. And that's, that's the problem. That's why, we, well, that's why we're, we just can't move forward. That membership database is the key. We thought the big the problem was going to be with the streamer, but actually it's not. You know, and, and when we started looking at it 18 months ago, we started looking at replacing everything with a big integrated solution, Joomla, WordPress, Drupal, and we actually have a Joomla beta site up and running. But the problem with using these packages is that nothing quite fits, you know. Each little bit looks good, but it only does 80% of what you want it to do. And so, you know, we, we sort of step back a bit from doing it as an integrated solution. And there's a thing called LDAP, which is a, a central authorization server. And we're looking to see if we can implement that and do the bits around it. But all the other bits need developing. As I say, we've got, we've got the streamer. But the big problem is that we don't know what we're doing. This is, you know, we can talk for hours about DigiThins and DTX1s, but this is not comfort zone for any of the committee. And we really need to try and get it fixed by the end of this year because the current hosting contract ends then and we really want the flexibility to be able to move off that platform for various reasons. We don't want to go out and spend any money because we don't really know what we need and we're liable to get screwed if we just go to somebody and say, can you fix our problem, please? And we don't actually know what the problem is. Well, yeah. So we actually need, we, we desperately need help to fix this problem. And we need somebody who can come in and, 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 and understands the issues and help us at least put a plan together. You know, and then we can try and find people to, to do it. And that's, that's really where we are. Um, I'm not going to say any more about it, um, but it is the one thing we failed on, and it's, we know it's getting more and more desperate month by month. We've got to fix it. If, you, if anybody on the stream or anybody here thinks they can help um, and, and add knowledge to the overall picture, you know, please come and talk to us. Otherwise, you'll just have to put up with the fact that perhaps you haven't got pictures in the shop and you know bits and pieces. And yeah, the stream does go slow, and sometimes the chat doesn't quite know. And you know what? We sit there going, hmm, don't know. <laughs> so, you know, help us, help us try and fix it. The great news, the good news about BATC Online is that Ian, who does this sort of stuff for a living, has revived our Facebook and Twitter accounts, and they're now active. We've got over 100 members on Facebook and apparently 4,300 people currently see our tweets with 25% engagement, i.e. they click on the link to follow through or whatever, which is way, way, way above the industry averages. So um, that's going really well. One of the things we have realised as we move forward is that there's absolutely no point us storing video material in our archive and trying to offer a YouTube type facility. We can't add any value there at all. So what we're looking to do is we've set up a YouTube channel for BATC and we're looking to try and migrate all of the archive over onto YouTube. We might as well use their storage and their bandwidth. There's no value us doing that. That's not what we really do. Um, and we'll be able to cross thing, cross link things like Colin when he does his tuna tutorial, we can cross link that into the BATC channel. But also, once we get the new website up and running, we will be able to create a gallery that looks like the BATC archive, but really is all our material stored on YouTube. So we can we can make it look as if it's part of what we're doing, where, but all the bandwidth and the storage is done on YouTube. So you'll see more and more uh, starting to use YouTube uh, for that. We, we absolutely will be doing the live streaming on .tv because we think that's where we add the real value. And, you know, 
Also, moving the YouTube into a gallery on .tv will enable us to get rid of all the adverts and the pre-roll adverts and the, the bogus searches, but just keeping the storage on YouTube seems to make sense. A um, lot of traffic on the forum, as I said, and that's helped to some extent by the Twitter and Facebook accounts. And there's the magic address, so it's www.batc.org.uk forum slash feed.php. If you click on that link, it looks something like that, which is just a list of all the, the, the posts in chron on chronological or date order. So on a busy day, I mean, you know, this one was, yeah, all of those are on the third, same day. You know, that's how many posts we're getting on the forum. So it makes sense to go to that feed rather than try and keep pace with it. So there, there's a lot of activity on the forum and there's an easy way to view what's going on. So in summary, it's been a pretty good year, really. Um, we've done an awful lot. If you consider where we've come from, from where we were in Basingstoke, we've got two new bands. We've done all the reduced bandwidth stuff. Um, but, you know, we think we're driving it in the right direction, but we do need your feedback. And the same thing goes for things like CQTV. You know, we think we're doing it right, but, you know, why don't you post on the forum your comments about it and comments on the articles and the Twitter feed and, and this sort of stuff. We need, we need your feedback. Um... BGM next year, ha, 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 so you've got a year to start thinking about it. We, Dave would like to give up the membership secretary's job. If there's anybody who fancies getting involved in that, we're actively looking for somebody to do that now. Um, so, you know, have a think about getting involved. It is your club, not our club. So uh, think about standing for committee next year. And that's it. We organised CAT 13, so uh, 15. Have you noticed that the pieces of paper have got CAT 13 on them? <laughs> you know, sir? <laughs> the joys of cut and paste. <laughs> so, you know, let's get on with the show and uh, kick off with the real interesting stuff. So, any questions on BATC or anything that I've just presented there? Very briefly, we've got time for a couple. Is it? Um, it is. Uh, Albert first. Albert, G4DHO. Uh, just a point about the magazine. I, I think it's absolutely fantastic and I do like to have a hard copy of the, of the magazine. I look forward to receiving it. I also get it digitally, of course. Um, if postage is such um, a problem, I, I'm pretty sure most people would pay extra to receive the magazine. And uh, I wouldn't see if, if, uh, any real difficulty in people who want to receive in the uh, magazine paying uh, to some extent, all the postage. It's no problem, I don't think. Yeah, I, I mean, don't know what the rest of the members think. Yeah, this is one of the, the things that we do consider. I mean, there is a, diff a large difference between the cyber membership and the printed membership, and that largely takes account of the costs. And I think we will try to move to a point where the majority of the costs of the printed magazine are covered by the paper members. But, uh, yeah. Sean, G8VPG. Um, the 146 NOVs run out at the end of October. Do we have any feel about whether they're likely to be renewed? They've, they've announced it. Have they? Yeah. Well, yes. That, yeah. That, it's been that's announced missed that it will us because a few of us down in Bristol were delaying expenditure on the band. No, no, we they've, thought they've it announced might. it three or four weeks ago. Somebody back me up here. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Ian KDD is nodding. Yes. That's good news. Thank yeah. you. No, it's just extension. Yeah. Where, where was that um, RSGB type. RSGB website. Okay. Uh, Bob? Uh, forward slash Nick. That's all I've got to say. On the, on the bottom of the box. You see, when uh, Sean, uh, when Colin's on, and um, <laughs> um, they always reply, um, we'd like to know who's on, uh, uh, forward slash Nick. Can you not just stick it on the... Bottom of the box. Yeah, so I think that repeaters actually ought to tick that, the repeater owners ought to tick that box which doesn't allow guests to comment. No, I think that's totally that's wrong. <laughs> because in, 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 in the respect to your comment, uh, well, what do you do about the shortwave uh, listeners and watchers? You're replying them okay. of what? Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, can you see yeah. about putting it on there, please? 
uh, forward slash Nick. On? On uh, the chat box at the bottom. Uh, for people to log in with their name, there's not, nothing to say. Right, you go on BAT Street. Yeah, you can put it in your HTML underneath. That's, that's all we can change. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Okay, we'll take a look at it. Thank you. Good. Right. <coughs>